Hey guys, in this video, I'm gonna show you essentially a universal magic preset workflow. Um, something I, I just learned recently, uh, and it's been incredibly helpful with making looks and positions and colors and all that type of stuff that aren't just, you know, these fixtures do this one thing. You know, you just like you know, with normal magic presets, you can spread value information of different types across a selection of fixtures. However, you're normally stuck to those magic presets. Whatever fixture type you use to make the preset is then the only fixture type you can use to output that preset. Um, unless you, you know, update things in the background, you're, you patch new, new fixtures in, and now you've got to redo your magic presets. I didn't want to do all that. I wanted to find a way to make them a little bit more universal. And of course, there's a time and place for everything. This is just something that I found that's so far worked for me. Um, so I wanted to kind of give a quick run through of how I made these universal magic presets. If you've not seen how to make magic presets at all, uh, I've made a video on that before. It's going to be in a card somewhere up top. Um, I'm going to do a quick run through of what this stage is, and then we'll make a quick magic preset like we've done before. But I'm going to also use that to show kind of what the limitations are. So for this rig, we've got a uh, total of 16 vipers, two trusses of eight. I'm using this as basically like my my source rig, my programming rig. Um, I wanna be able to m make presets off of these fixtures and then you know, use that information across other fixtures that I'll patch in for the different venues I'll be in, you know, on tour or busking across different venues, all that type of stuff. So there's the 16 vipers right there. And then I've got 12 force S spots in the back. Um, there's not really gonna be many venues that you'll walk into that'll just have 12 you know, spots just aligned on the upstage. This is all hypothetical, but I'm just more so using this for, for a point uh, that I'll make later. This rig would be like our physical rig that we're seeing, that, like you're working with tonight. This is the actual rig that's gonna be outputting things you're pushing through the programmer and through sequences. So let's make a quick magic preset the old way, or I guess the regular way. Uh, we'll take our first two fixtures. I'm gonna make a position preset that's just a fan out. It'll be 45 to the left, spread across to 45 to the right. So first two, I'm gonna hit next, or the right arrow and select the first fixture, tell it to go stage right. Hit next again and tell that one to go stage left. I'm gonna hit set or Q on your keyboard if you're using shortcuts. And now we've got both of them selected and we're gonna store this right here. Now, a quick thing that we're gonna see here, quick problem is that this has selective information specific to those fixtures. It's because one fixture is being told to go 45 to the left and another fixture is being told to go 45 to the right. Part of the problem here, which even if I swipe E to edit setting and I switch, I flip the magic switch right here and exit out, because there's selective information specific to those two fixtures, even when I turn it to a magic preset, which basically turns it global, it can share that information across the same fixture type. When I do that, you know, great. I've got the vipers, you know, spreading that spreading the wealth. They're spreading the values of, you know, negative 45 to 45, which is great, but now I can't have my force S spot. So if I bring them in, let me uh, bring them up to a place where you can see them and I click it, nothing's gonna happen, right? So this is where I was trying to find a way to make it universally updatable. So let me back out of all that. The, the method I found is we're gonna actually store an empty preset right here, no information in it. Uh, we're gonna swipe it over to edit setting and we're gonna turn this into a recipe. We're gonna have two recipe lines. All right, so selection is gonna be my spots group because that's that's the group I'm using for my, my recipes and other embedded stuff uh, that I'm going to use in these different venues, all that type of stuff. So the fixtures might change in the group, but I always want it to be that group that's, that's you know, executing whatever it is I'm, I'm wanting it to do. So spots group in the selection. And for values, we're gonna do 
stage right on the first one and stage left on the second one. Now, the reason I did that is the same way we did when we made the regular magic preset and we had fixture one do stage right and fixture two stage left. If you saw on the selection grid, we were basically selecting column one and column two, or I guess it'd be column zero, column one, technically. We need to make that same type of selection. So that's where if we come over here, as long as we have uh, our matrix information enabled, uh, make sure this X is enabled right here. In the first recipe line under the X column, we're gonna say column one, and in the second recipe line, we're gonna say column two. The last part of this is turning on the magic switch. And now if I exit out of this, I select, uh, let me show you this real quick. If I just double click, it'll still only grab that selection. It hasn't sent global information yet. It's still, because it's a recipe, technically, it recognizes it as a, uh, as a selective preset based on the recipe. Now, if I select the group and then the preset, it recognizes it more so as global information. And now my Vipers have spread. So it's perfect. I was like, okay, this is great. So I was like, okay, great. Let me add in my, my, my physical rig, right? So I'm going to take my spots group. I know since the Vipers are eight wide and my force S spots are 12 wide, I'm going to go uh, two grid squares to the left. Again, I could completely replace this information, but I'm just going to uh, add it to the existing for information for the moment. Okay. We're going to add that in there store. And since we're only adding information, we can merge. You see, they just kind of came in because I've got uh, a dimmer on and a tilt uh, sequence being pushed. Now when I select my spots group and select the magic preset, watch closely, only the four S spots moved into position. That defeated a little bit of the purpose, not all of it, because if I did a complete swap, you know, I took the vipers out of the spots group and only had the four S spots in there, it'd be fine. But for the sake of showing you why your X grid selection is important in case you have multiple fixture types uh, going into the same spots group, you want to make sure you can hit everything. So that's where I thought, okay, what if I made a quick change on the recipe lines? So if we swipey to edit setting and let's say if we know we're going to have a minimum of six fixtures total um if we were to take out those vipers and we know we're always going to have no less than six fixtures wide then i could say grab fixtures or columns five and six in my spots group so if i go if i change that to five and six and i'll show you what that looks like real quick in my spots group instead of only grabbing first column and second column, which only grabbed my four S spots. Now it's grabbing the fifth column and sixth column, which are grabbing both fixture types that are stored in the spots group. Now, when I select my, or I click on my magic preset, my recipe magic preset, watch closely, everything moves to position, everything goes, which is great. That's exactly what I was looking for. So that's basically what this, was, but I, I just wanted, I'm gonna show one more example. If you've already got, you already understand the idea, great. You don't have to watch along, but I'm also gonna do this for a color preset as well. Just additional proof of concept, essentially. And not only with that, am I gonna, is it for additional proof of concept, I'm going to complicate it a little bit more. Not really, but you'll see what I mean. So I stored an empty preset, swipey in my color pool, swipey down to edit setting, click turn into recipe. And let's say I actually want a gradient that goes cyan, magenta, cyan. I want it to fade to one color and come back to the other. For that, normally you would do X one, two, and three, or your three fixture selections. For a recipe, you're gonna do three recipe lines. So once again, my selection is my spots. 
first color preset in first color recipe is going to be cyan second is magenta and third is back to cyan now the same way in the position preset that we kind of offset our first grid location our first grid column just to make sure that we if we only hit first and second or one two three we wouldn't possibly miss some others we're kind of in a better spread position I'm gonna do that same type of offset in here. So I'm actually gonna start at four. Again, let's say minimum of six fixtures. I'm gonna start at column four, column five, and column six. So the last thing we need to do is flip the magic switch, exit out, select our spots, and go to the new recipe magic preset, and it automatically takes. Again, just to show that this does update with new fixture selections within the group. Let's say I only did the force S spots. Store there. I'm going to overwrite it because I'm changing information. Now, when I select spots and go there, they automatically take. So there is a time and place for this. Again, all of this requires universal information. The moment it becomes global or selective, you will automatically have to, you know, store new color presets for your incoming fixtures um, or position presets or whatever. Um, so there, don't get me wrong, this is not a complete fix all, but for specific use case scenarios, which here there could be plenty of them, um, universal presets are what are what are going to help drive a universal update on magic presets. So all that to say, this is how you can create universal magic presets.